All right, in this video, we're gonna talk about average filtering in OpenCV using Python. So we'll start off by saying what it is, why we need it, how does it work, and jump straight into a coding example. So by the end of this video, we will see how we could transform this image here to this blurry image here on the right. So what is average filtering? Average filtering is doing 2D convolution to get the average value of the neighbors, okay? So why do we need to do average filtering? It's good for smoothing and noise reduction. So you can see here that even though we may not want to smooth out this nice looking picture, here we're just doing it for the sake of showing how you could smooth it out. So how does average filtering work? We will do convolution using this kernel here. So this kernel is um, three by three, but you could actually choose this to be any size. So in general, it could be n by n, where n could be any value, okay? As long as the kernel is not um, bigger than the image, up to some constraints, but usually it's gonna be a lot smaller than the image, okay? So let's jump straight into a coding example. Okay, so as usual, we're gonna go ahead and import our modules that we need. So import cv2 as cv, import os, import numpy, and then import um, matplotlib.pyplot, as plt and we're going to do as np here okay so we're going to go ahead and call our function average filtering and then our if name equals main and we're going to call our average filtering here okay so inside our average filtering let's go ahead and read in our image and then our image path um it's gonna be os.path.join and then pass in root. It's called demo images and then tessa.jpg. Okay, so our image here is gonna be cv.amread and we're gonna pass in our image path. And we're gonna go ahead and create a trackbar to see how the different, um, the, the different sizes of our kernel affects the output. Okay, so we have here, once we read our image, um, let's go ahead and create a window name. And we're just gonna call this average, fil average filter. So we need a named window, pass in our window name. And we have a create trackbar here. We're gonna make a trackbar and the trackbar name is gonna be called N for the kernel size, our window name. And then our initial value and the max value, we're just gonna cap it at 100. And we need a callback function here. So we'll have a callback, pass an input, and then pass because we are doing nothing right now. So that's our callback function. And then once we, we have our image here, right? And then we created our trackbar. Uh, the image is, the image I have is a little big, so I'm gonna size it down. So image.shape here, and then I'm gonna have a scale factor of one fourth, and my new width is gonna be a scaled version of that. And likewise, my height is gonna be a scaled version of that as well. So this is our new height and width, and then now I could create my new image yeah, I'm gonna do cv dot um, resize here, and I'll pass in my image and my new uh, width and height. Okay, so this is my new smaller image. So inside here, what we want to do is check out our trackbar to see how how changing the kernel size is gonna have a different influence. So cv dot weight key, and uh, if we press Q, it's gonna quit. Okay, so. Sorry, breaking condition. And then let's go ahead and read in our trackbar value. So cv.get trackbar position, the name of our trackbar and our window name. And then we're gonna go ahead and filter our image using, there's actually a cv.blur for the average filter. And you need to pass in the image and the size of your kernel. So here we're using a square kernel, so it's the same size for the X and Y. So now I'm gonna do cv.umshow, pass in my image name, and then pass in my filtered image. 
And then when everything is closed out, we want to destroy all windows. So if I go ahead and run this, we should see some image with a trackbar. So right now it's set as one. So you can see if I, it's two, three, you can see it's slowly getting more and more blurry, right? So as this kernel size is increasing, we're averaging more and more pixels. That's why it gets more and more blurry, okay? So you could go ahead and play around with the trackbar and see how much blurriness you have. So you can see a problem with this blurring is that um, a lot of the edges are lost because everything is just blurred together, right? So later on, we'll talk about some uh, filtering techniques that could actually blur and still preserve these edges, which was pretty interesting. And you'll see that in a later video, okay? So if you found this video helpful, give a like and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.